so opens that team like last year sometime you know uh, you can read the agenda what we're going to talk about. Um, it was very, very complicated for me to learn OpenStack as a product manager. I didn't want to go too much into the weeds, didn't want to run Python client and all that. You know, it just was taking too much of my time. And uh, I used to work with a lot of distributors, uh, some DIY customers. And it used to take us uh, several weeks to get OpenStack deployed, and then even more weeks to troubleshoot it because it was spewing so many logs. Um, so one of my personal satisfaction out of making this product is that we have made it very simple. And it does not solve the world hunger problem, but it makes it easier for you to deploy a production-ready open stack, starting with your vSphere web client, right? Yeah. So that was one of my original goals. When I joined as a product manager, I was like, if enterprises need to be able to use open stack, it has to become simple. It has to become uh, enterprise-ready. So this is our first step. Deploying OpenStack, right? So we will we have added features in addition to the integration that we have done. Um, we have added features to make it, and that would help as well. Uh, we have made uh, uh, installer and configuration in VMware integrated OpenStack. That would make it easier for deploying uh, and configuring and managing OpenStack, right? So what is VMware integrated OpenStack? We have done all these work. Uh, this is independent of VMware integrated OpenStack. We have done all the integration with the core compute, network, images, storage, all the integrations are in place, right? So Nova can talk to vCenter, it can spin up VMs. Uh, those drivers are all upstream. Uh, Cinder can talk to vCenter, spin up disk and attach to VMs. Glance can store images in vSphere data stores, so you don't have to consider a different solution for your images. And Neutron can use NSX driver to create overlay networks, and it can also use DVS. We recommend using NSX because it gives the most uh, flexibility for cloud uh, applications. Now, those integrations are all upstream, right? You can go and download it from the Nova community. You can get it from any other distributor. So what is different in VMware integrated OpenStack? As I mentioned, the additional component here is an installer and a configuration piece, which is based out of vSphere web client. So that is the net new component in VMware integrated OpenStack. Of course, a lot of testing and hardening before we go to market and sell it to customers. We'll have to do a lot more testing and QA and make sure all of these things work, right? So that's where a lot of our time is spent at this point. So all of this is bundled as an appliance and you get it uh, as an OVA file. You go to your vSphere uh, web client, you download the OVA and you start the installation. What do you get when you install? You get a well-tested production-ready architecture, right? So you get a load balancer, and behind which we put all of these services behind it, right? Uh, you will see some of the things which are not necessarily core OpenStack, some things like memcache, RabbitMQ, uh, DHCP agent, which is somehow missing in this one, uh, database services. So these things are all needed to run OpenStack in production. This is nothing new, right? Anybody who has run OpenStack at a scale knows that Keystone will start throttling if you don't have a memcache over there, because Keystone gets bombarded with all the session authentication requests. So all these things are needed, and how do we know? We run a very large OpenStack deployment internally at VMware for our own developer use cases. In fact, all the development work that we do runs a CI job using OpenStack APIs in that OpenStack cloud. So very democratic way of development, right? We consume what we uh, develop and ship to customers. This architecture is well tested from our side. Out of the box, it can run for, I think we have tested for 2,000 VMs. Uh, it's good. Out of the box, one vCenter, 2,000 VMs. That's a pretty sizable OpenStack environment uh, in about 30 to 45 minutes, right? So what happens uh, really when you're deploying it? So it's a very simple step-by-step -step process that you get. You get the appliance, as I mentioned. Uh, you go to vSphere Web Client. You will get a plugin registered. I'm going to show all this. Uh, this is what we will show in the demo, essentially. This is how we create OpenStack. So you start with an appliance. You get an installer and configuration service. This is You can think of it as a, like a, a wrapper around Ansible or Puppet or Chef, any of the configuration tools. We are using Ansible inside it. Uh, and that goes ahead and creates all those VMs, right? So you don't have to manually create all those 15 VMs that I showed. It will uh, take an Ubuntu template, it will clone all of the VMs, and it will give them roles. Some of them will become DHCP, some of them will become memcache, RabbitMQ, uh, all just the standard vCenter operation of cloning from existing template. So what do you, in terms of like more high-level architecture, this is how we 
see the OpenStack world uh, once you deploy it, right? Uh, there is a management cluster. It's just a cluster that you have dedicated to run all your OpenStack components. Everything gets deployed in the management cluster. Uh, you can give it uh, more resources. You can uh, put it, uh, enable vCenter HA on those so you can protect it against hardware failure. Uh, the architecture itself has HA, so there is application failure, failure protection. So out of the box, it's very resilient. Uh, you will be protected from both host and application uh, failure, which is important because that is a control plane, right? It should not go down. Otherwise, you will have a downtime in your um, environment. And even though you might not care about resiliency of tenant VMs, but you do care about resiliency of the control plane. That control plane needs to be on a good, solid footing. Uh, and then you can allocate multiple clusters. The key thing to note in our integration is we expose uh, to Nova per cluster. Nova does not see each and individual host. It sees whole cluster as a compute resource. The advantage is then we can later on do DRS and do optimal packing of the VMs so you get the benefit of both the worlds. And Mike will explain it to uh, in more detail later on. So I'm going to focus on how all of this is created, right? All of these VMs are created for OpenStack, the whole architecture that I just talked about. So this uh, is the deployment where we will create OpenStack in eight minutes. It's a recorded video. But the fastest we have done uh, OpenStack deployment is when the customer had SSDs in their environment. It took 15 minutes for complete OpenStack deployment. I was surprised. It takes us around 30 to 45 minutes to deploy OpenStack nowadays. So you start, as I said, right, with the OVF. You get the VIO uh, appliance. It's the simple standard OVF. Um, if you have VMware administrators in the audience, they are familiar with this. You just point to a regular OVF file or the URL of the file. Once you start, once you download the OVF, it will ask for some properties like networking. Where do you want to deploy this OVF? Where do you want to? Oh, how do you want to hook it up to your network? The standard EULA and all those things. All right. Let's go to the next step. Where do you want to deploy this? Uh, you choose the cluster. So these are the standard VMware um, techniques. You put the VM in a particular cluster. You choose it. You power it on. Uh, where do you want to uh, put the backend images? Uh, in this case, we are using vSAN data store. Uh, you can use any other data store as well. The key aspect is uh, in most of these deployments are networking. <laughs> Essentially, networking is, and certificates are the most uh, challenging parts in most of the deployments. Uh, so uh, the one network that it needs is uh, the one which it will communicate with vCenter because it's going to trigger all the cloning and all those operations through vCenter. So that network should be connected to vCenter so that both this server and vCenter should be able to talk with each other. Right? That's how it is going to go ahead and orchestrate all those cloning of VMs. Um, this is standard. You will need the gateway servers, the DNS mask, and standard network configurations. Once you have this, it, it will register for SSO. You don't have to worry about authentication. It will leverage vCenter uh, single sign-on. Uh, that reduces the traffic between these two and uh, between this server and the vCenter. So you get single sign on, and this service is registered. And you will see a plugin over here in your vSphere web client. Once you click on that, you will get a whole bunch of options, including deploy OpenStack. And once you deploy it, you can configure add data stores, clusters. We'll also add things like remove cluster, remove data store without uh, introducing downtime because we can do vMotion of stuff. Right? So then you can start deploying OpenStack. So far, so far, so good. It's a standard OVF deploy. Um, you got the plugin registered. Now you start deploying OpenStack. The first thing it needs is the vCenter, where it will deploy OpenStack, right? And the OpenStack communicates with vCenter, so it needs the credentials for VC. Then it will ask for where do you want to create the OpenStack deployment. And as we said, we pick a cluster. We call it management cluster. It requires a minimum of three hosts, uh, mainly for <coughs> HA reasons. And that too specifically for databases, because they, we put database VM1 on each of the host so that you get nice HA configuration. Um, this particular deployment will require minimum of two networks. One network where your APIs are coming in, your horizon is coming in, all your users are talking and consuming OpenStack. And one network where all the management traffic, the communication between OpenStack, between vCenter, between Rabbit and other components of OpenStack. Right? So just two simple networks. As I mentioned, there's a load balancer, so it requires an outbound, the external IP, uh, and the inbound to relay the traffic to the controllers and RabbitMQs. Right? It's going to go ahead and deploy all these components. So I'm going to pause at this moment, and 
this is what, I, when I joined this group, this is where we used to spend months and weeks and several uh, man hours, um, me just trying to learn, and there, there were people who were trying to build this in production, and it was very tough, right? So building this tool makes it really easy, and I'm not saying this is the only tool, there are dozens of such tools, but this makes it really easy. This is the starting point for an enterprise-grade OpenStack because you should be able to deploy it first, right? So this is, makes it really easy for VMware administrators. Um, they, they know all this uh, tricks of clustering and data store creations and all those stuff. Then you can select which Nova, uh, which cluster do you want to use for tenant nodes, right? So here we are using compute cluster one. Uh, I will show, uh, come back towards after the deployment, I will show you how it's exposed in the horizon and available for consumption. What data stores you want to use for Nova, just gives it more storage. Where do you want to put your images? Just give you, select any of the data stores. Uh, no need for any Swift or additional data stores if that's what you were using for Glance specifically, right? You can just use the same data stores. Uh, networking options, so this is of interest to you. There are two options for networking. If you are just doing IP dial tone, your VMs don't need anything fancy, you just want to hook them on a VLAN, use the virtual, the distributed switch. Uh, most of the cloud applications need um, networking overlays or at least a scalable networking. So you end up using NSX. Uh, they will enter a bunch of NSX parameters. I'm going to skip that part. The only uh, thing of interest here is this uh, extra network that NSX needs is for all the data overlay. You don't want to use the management <coughs> or external. This is additional uh, network that you will need for NSX. That's the data overlay network. Also, all the DHCP allocation happens on that network. This is your Horizon password. Uh, you give it the Horizon admin password. We'll configure it, and once you log in, into, uh, once the Horizon is up, you log in using this password. Oh yeah, and this one is my favorite. Uh, this is not a required, but I would almost never deploy OpenStack now and going forward without a syslog server. I have spent several hours of my life looking through Nova and Neutron and Cinder logs. I don't want to do it again. So please use your favorite syslog server and point it to the syslog from day one, right? You will need it, it's highly recommended. That's my only, uh, th that's my greatest learning from all the OpenStack. Syslog, absolutely important. Uh, Splunk, log inside, whatever is your favorite, just pick it, uh, start using it, start scripting on top of it so that it makes your life much easier. Because a simple thing like, okay, I'm, my VMs are not getting IP, is a spread between DHCP agent, between Nova, between Neutron. So it's, it's really frustrating when you have to switch between VMs and find the logs, the right logs, and it uh, takes a lot of debugging uh, hassle away if you have the syslog. So while once that is, uh, once that you have, uh, once you have fired that one off, it's gonna go ahead and create all those VMs for you. Um, the standard cloning operation, this is what we have been doing in VMware for ages. You take the Ubuntu template VM, we clone it, all 15 VMs will be created. Uh, the networking hookups will be done, uh, necessary NICs will be created on those. Um, Software bundles will be uploaded and they will all be configured for their specific roles. Here the IP is assigned. They are ready. If I move ahead a little bit, you will see that they are all installed on that management cluster. And you can see the, you can go to host and clusters and you can see it's installed on the management cluster, all these components. And there are two of, uh, two of each one of them, the database, so there are three VMs. There you go, OpenStack deployment ready. I mean, it's a recorded video, that's why it's done in eight minutes, but I can guarantee nowadays that uh, you can yourself do it in 40 minutes. You can deploy OpenStack fully, production ready, and allocate as many clusters as you want um, and start using it. So this is the cluster that we had allocated, uh, the compute cluster one, as you can see, 96 vCPUs, all the storage that you <coughs> allocated, everything is ready, and you can start creating VMs, start consuming the infrastructure, start creating disks, if you have NSX, you can start creating private tenant networks, um, the complete cloud applications. You can start firing off the OpenStack APIs from a command line and start consuming OpenStack, right? Now the next thing is, once you have deployed this OpenStack, how are you gonna operate this thing? Because this thing is not gonna operate on its own. So you need some tools to operate, and that's where Mike will help, all right? Okay. All yours. Thank you.
OK, so once we've got the deployed environment, let's look at a, at a sample where I have created a um, three-tiered topology. So here I've just run some scripts, and I've created the, a web, an application, and a database tier. And I've, I've got logical networks for each one of them, a VM on each one of those logical networks connected to a logical router, and then with a connection to an external, um, a, an external network. So I've got that available. So let's, let's take a look in vCenter and see, um, as a vSphere administrator, some of the things that we've done to help you manage an environment like this. And so for those of you who are not familiar with, with VMware at all, vCenter is really the management platform that, that administrators use to do everything from creating hosts and networks and data stores and, and actually creating VMs. And we're going to look at the host and clusters view here. And you can see, I know this is a little bit small, but you can see a set of hosts here, and you also can see a few VMs. You'll notice that three of these VMs have UUIDs, so they get created with the OpenStack UUID, which is useful to an OpenStack person, but not quite so interesting maybe to the virtualization administrator who doesn't really know what that is. Below that, you can see three VMs that have a label that started with volume, and that has to do with cinder volume. So vSphere does not have a concept of a disk that is independent of a VM. So we actually do something a little tricky here. We create a VM and we attach those persistent cinder volumes to it. And then we can move them to other VMs as you, as you attach and detach them. But they persist with um, connected to this stub VM. So as an, as an admin, within vCenter, we've given you a little bit of additional capability. You'll notice here there are a couple of portlets um, that are OpenStack specific. So we're capturing things like the uh, the VM name, the tenant name, the flavor, even the logical network. And then we're associating tags with those. So as an administrator, I could go look for all the VMs that were created by a, a specific tenant. Or in this case, um, I'm gonna, gonna search for all the VMs that were created with the M1 tiny flavor. And that's as simple as, as actually um, issuing the search key at the top. So I enter M1 tiny, and then I'm going to get that list of VMs, and then I can manage that in the same way that, uh, that I've managed um, my non-OpenStack created VMs. So we talked about the idea of, of creating the environment and, and presenting a cluster to, uh, to OpenStack. So what does that do for you? Well, um, OpenStack, the Nova scheduler, looks at the uh, vSphere clusters that are available, and then places at the cluster level, and then the distributed resource scheduler um, is a vSphere construct for being able to manage resources and move VMs around. Can that change? Somebody, Somebody hit the light in the back. Um, to be able to move VMs around within your cluster. So DRS will actually handle the placement of that VM. The other thing that, that is interesting is since DRS is handling that, the other things that you expect to have in a vSphere environment are available. HA, um, vMotion, so you can move a running virtual machine within the cluster, and, and this doesn't impact OpenStack in any way. So here you can see that DRS is turned on in this environment. The other thing that you can do as a vSphere administrator, yes? So we're actually vMotioning within the cluster. So we're not moving it outside the cluster. We're moving it. Is that supported though? Um, it, it's not supported moving it across clusters. Not yet. Not yet. Yeah. So you're you're moving. I mean, you're you're placing the VM in a particular cluster. Yes. So um, one of the other capabilities that vSphere administrators use a lot is the the idea of putting a host in maintenance mode, and having zero downtime maintenance of hardware. And so th that's obviously enabled because when we put a host in maintenance mode, 
DRS will evacuate that host, move all of those VMs off of that host onto another host in the cluster, and then you're able to do your hardware maintenance um, without taking down any of, those, any of those VMs. So it just takes a couple of seconds for us to evacuate that, that host in this demo environment. You can see there are zero hosts left there, and so then I could do my hardware maintenance and then migrate the VMs back once that, that maintenance is done. Um, you saw Arvin place the, uh, uh, the individual during the install, place the management VMs on vSAN. So vSAN is our converged storage infrastructure, lets you combine SSDs and spinning disks together into a, into a converged storage um, infrastructure. And that's available for not only the management um, components, but also the, uh, the tenants as well. So we enable vSAN, and you can see it's enabled here. But beyond just using vSAN, we also support storage policy-based management. So within vSphere, I can drill in and create a couple of policies. And I've done that here. I've created a platinum policy and a, a gold policy. So the platinum policy is associated with my vSAN data store. And then the gold policy could be a local or a, or a NAS-based um, data store. And the way this works is you actually expose some rules and a set of capabilities. And so for vSAN here, you see I have a, uh, the number of stripes and the number of um, failures to tolerate for that environment. And every storage um, uh, infrastructure that we use actually exposes some set of capabilities through storage policy management. And what we want to do here is map this to cinder volume types. And so we're going to go in and use Python scripts here and create a couple of volume types for gold and, and platinum. And then we're going to use the um, volume type key command to be able to add an extra spec that maps the cinder volume type to the um, storage profile that we created in vCenter. And then we'll actually create volumes and then attach them to a VM. So now we're able to use cinder volume types with storage policy-based management. And you can see here I've got, as I list the, the volume, you can see that I've got attached to a VM that starts with a UUID of 95E. It has a, a, a volume type of platinum. We're displaying it as, as a vSAN volume. And what we want to do is to go back into vCenter and see that this volume that we've created and attached to a VM, we're going to look at that specific VM and see the new hard disk that was attached and just verify that it was actually put on the vSAN data store. So we go down to hard disk two and expand it. And you can see that, that it is on that data store. So we've combined storage policy-based management with cinder volume types. I'm sorry, is that storage profile or storage capacity? Yes, it's a storage profile. But the general capability is storage policy-based management. But we're doing a storage profile with a, with a uh, cinder volume type. I'm sorry, I didn't. I couldn't uh, hear that. I know that uh, you support VMware vSAN for the Cinder, right? Right. But do you support uh, other third party like uh, HP Store versus VSA or VSA? So, so what we support, what we support are supported vSphere data stores. So, you know, as long as underneath, uh, underneath that, whatever, it, whatever it is that you use, as long as you can create a data store based on that, uh, on that storage infrastructure, we can support it. Yes. And, uh, and the raw, right? Yeah. VMFS is attached. Yeah, so we're using VMFS. You don't support VBOT yet, right? Not yet. Not yet. But that's going to be probably next, right. next year. So if you remember in our environment, we had three clusters, and we, we made the compute cluster one our tenant cluster. We're going to expand the capacity for our environment here. So we're going to add compute cluster two um, to our uh, resources available to our tenants. So we'll go back to that, uh, that VMware integrated OpenStack plugin. And if you remember, the only thing you could do before was to deploy an OpenStack cluster. But now we've got more capability because we've, once we've added the cluster, we can add more compute resource. We can add both Nova and Glance data stores to the environment. So what's interesting is not only are we adding the cluster, but 
because the compute capability is actually um, resource intensive, and here I select compute cluster two, because it's resource intensive, it's responsible for doing all the launching and terminating of those VMs, we're actually going to scale out the management plane as part of this. So we're going to add another compute management VM into that management plane that Arvind created before. So here you see the name of it, Vio Compute One. And so we're going to deploy that onto the vSAN data store. <clears throat> and then we're also going to choose the uh, Nova database. So instances that we deploy um, on this, where are we going to deploy them? Which data store for that? And then once we select that, we're really going to go through the same process we went through before. So we're going to clone that um, OpenStack template and run Ansible playbooks to be able to provision the compute services within that management VM. And now you've expanded the capacity of, uh, of your OpenStack tenants. No, it's, it's this, this it's, is all uh, vSphere. It's, it's vSphere right? Yeah. Yep. So we we go and check and just to see that that VM is actually running. So we look at the hierarchy of VMs in our management plane, and we have two of them now because we've scaled that out. So we also talked about integration to other uh, vSphere products. So um, vCenter uh, vCenter Operations Manager or vRealize uh, Operations. Um, and and log insight. I'm still getting some of the names some of the names down. So vCenter Operations Manager is a is a way to proactively monitor your infrastructure. But what we've done is we've created management packs so that um, there are actual monitoring of the services associated with OpenStack. So what you're looking at here is a, a set of dashboards, and this one is monitoring the controller VM. So we're running controllers in an active active configuration. So you see two badges for each of the services. So we've got Keystone, we've got um, Nova, we've got Neutron, and then under the storage, we have both Glance and Cinder. So not only are we able to see at a glance the health of that infrastructure, but we're actually um, capturing metrics so that we can look at individual services and see their CPU and memory consumption. So as I drill into Nova here, I can see Nova API or Nova Scheduler CPU and memory um, consumption. And the same thing is true if I click on the badges for the storage section, I can look at, at Glance and, and Cinder. See the, see the health of the infrastructure and also how they're using resources. And I also visually can look at the entire infrastructure stack. So I can see the services, I can see the operating system that's running and see if it's healthy, I can see the VM and I can see the host. So very easy for me to tell if I have an outage in one place or I've got an outage in the entire stack. We have additional dashboards around the uh, um, compute, compute infrastructure, network, and storage. We also are capturing information by tenant. So here I could say, in my environment, I've created the demo tenant. Um, I was very creative when I was coming up with a name for this. I used demo. But I can see immediately the infrastructure associated with the demo tenant, and I can see that it's healthy. I can drill into each of the individual components of that. So I can see the VMs, and I can see each of the logical networks. And just by hovering over either any of these, I see its, its health, its risk, its efficiency, um, really at a glance here. So is it using VCOps or just a native uh, vCenter? This is using VCOps. So there are Hyperic agents running in each of those VMs that are monitoring the services. And when the, when the services go down, um, VCOps is actually polling and, and finds out that that, information, or that, that particular service has, has died. So what happens if we actually have a service outage? So we're going to go back to the command line and stop the Nova Scheduler service. So I just say, service Nova Scheduler stop. So that Hyperic agent, within depending on your configured time, within a minute or so, will we'll notice that that has stopped. And you'll see that badge change. So not only do I see that you'll notice it only changed in one because I stopped it on one of the controllers. It's running on the other controller. But beyond just knowing that I have an outage, I can actually click on the badge and drill in and find out, well, what is the outage? Because remember, we're monitoring 
we're monitoring all of the infrastructure. So it could, you could have lost the host, you could have lost just the VM, or you could have just lost the service. So I drill into that, and I see that the outage is actually the Nova scheduler is down. If I continue down that, I, I go even further and I see what the remediation is. Restart the Nova scheduler service. So I go ahead and do that. After that starts, again, the Hyperic agent picks that up. Notice it's, it's started. And VC Ops picks it up after that. And then the badge changes back to green. So the last thing to, to show you, and Arvind helped me out with all the setup on this, is to really talk about managing your log files. So you can choose any syslog server. In this case, for the demonstration, we're using LogInsight. And I'm using a demonstration of our internal network systems business unit cloud. So again, we've created management packs so that we have specific metrics that are available in these dashboards. And so at a glance, I can see things like looking at all of uh, a heat map of all of the stack trace errors that have occurred um, uh, in Nova over a period of time. Or I can look at the instance growth over a period of time in this environment. If I'm running NSX, I could drill down into NSX and I can see the logical networks. And what you see here is we've got over 3,500 logical networks and over 1,300 routers. It's interesting if you give people the capability to create their own networks, they actually do it. So there are a lot of networks in this environment and we can monitor that growth um, easily through this dashboard. We can also look at uh, API calls, the number of API requests over time. We can also see how response change, uh, times have changed based on this, those changes in API requests. But maybe what you might use most often in here is this interactive drill down into log files to, to do troubleshooting. So I can choose a window of time, maybe a six hour window, searching through all of these log files. Maybe I wanna narrow it, so I drag across a timeline, choose an hour and a half window. I reduce the number of log entries, and I can also filter it by um, keys. So here I'm looking at traceback. And so very quickly, I've drilled in to see that I have a, a, an issue on a particular network where there are no IPs left available. And that is the reason I got a particular error. I could have searched by the UUID if I wanted to or some other criteria. And um, Log Insight also gives you some ability to aggregate messages that have similar errors. So if you're getting 1,500 DHCP errors, they'll actually be aggregated together to help you understand what they are and have you not searched for them over and over and over again. So what we've tried to show you here in this kind of 40 minute episode is, is how easy it is to deploy a production grade uh, OpenStack leveraging your existing expertise with vSphere and, and your existing capability to manage that sort of environment and showed you how we've integrated with some of the other tools around it to really help you um, manage that production environment. So with that, that's, that's all we had for presentation and we have time for any yeah, other questions. Yeah, ample time for questions, sir. Yes. Okay, so I'm gonna split that into one additional part which you mentioned, If even if you want to add other hypervisor regions, the main challenge is, as you know, is not how to hook that up with OpenStack. The main challenge is actually testing and support of that architecture. So we are actively investigating with our partners on how to deliver it in a meaningful way to enterprises. Uh, that's a next frontier for us. But if you are today and if you are not worried about that part, as you mentioned, um, there are a few other benefits. First of all, all these products, vSphere, NSX, all these are well tested. We, we test them internally across uh, hundreds of customers, right? So we know where the bugs are much earlier than any of our partners or distributors. So quality, we can guarantee more quality uh, for these products underneath OpenStack. So it's reliable. Six months down the lane, your you know, hypervisor is not gonna have a Linux bridge failure or a kernel panic somewhere or iSCSI failure, right? We would probably know it before you and we'll probably give you a patch. Uh, second thing, there's more and more operational things which we can build in because vCenter has capabilities such as snapshot. 
you can snapshot a VM, apply a patch, and if it does not work, roll back, you can power it back on. So we are working on those things which will help automated patching, even automated upgrade, right? If you ask people, why are you still stuck in Grizzly? Everybody knows it's hard to upgrade. We are mm. trying to make it easier. Right? The whole idea is if it has to become enterprise grade, it has to come with a lot of operational benefits, tools, scripts, out of box support. Because not every enterprise has hundreds of developers sitting there to build cloud platform. They have other things to do, right? So that is our biggest uh, um, that, you know, focus. And also support, single point of support. Anything from Nova Python process to the hypervisor to the NSX will support, will take the support call. I'm not saying it's all done by VMware. We'll probably have some third party engagements in the back for Memcache, for example. Um, but we will take the support call and we'll fix it. We'll release the patch to you, right? So it's uh, support, operations, deployment, complete life cycle. That's how it needs to be. And that's where we are trying to go. What's the version that's integrated up to now? Is it better? Ice House. This one is Ice House. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so Any other questions? Um, the, I actually missed the first part. Uh, so I wanted to know is that uh, all those open stack services, right? So uh, yeah. they can be deployed on the VM? Yeah, these yes. are all deployed as so VMs. Same ESXi class, right? So like for example, at my home, I have got two white boxes. Oh, the, the, this one is not for home use. This is for production use. There is a toy available for home use, which deploys everything in one VM as well. So you can do it in. Yeah, that's, that's for home use, there is a separate toy version of it. Yeah, yeah. so but I, I really don't want that. I, I want a production version to be deployed. Then you yeah. need to get three hosts minimum. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Minimum three, three hosts. Three, uh, how do you do it? Like three hosts. Host, so one host you uh, deploy all the services, and the rest of the two hosts the compute nodes. Once you deploy it, you will see how it has laid out all the VMs. Um, three hosts no, so for the, the management cluster, and one host for compute is the minimum. Oh, three minimum. Hosts for management. Yes. 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 And yes. Any other? Yeah. Minimum of three hosts. Okay. And what do you uh, use the Ansible for? To give them orchestration the roles, of orchestration. the services within the within the VMs. Just like you would use starting all the open stack servers. Let me take a question over here too. Yeah. So the visualization of visualization is the purpose. We will still define network. Here you mentioned NSX. Is that how the uniform network maps to purpose or visualizing NSX? What is that? Yeah. So so um, we're still using we're still using port groups, right? So you could either whether you're using the distributed switch or um, or NSX, we're still um, creating port groups within within vSphere. The cluster. Um, so it can cross the cluster. Yeah. It can cross the cluster. So distributed port groups yeah. should be able to span. Yes, in the back. K KVM. With, uh, I did. I didn't understand the question. Uh huh. Okay. Uh, not not necessarily. I, I, I don't know what you mean by Nova KVM. Uh, no, Nova so just runs as Python processes here, uh, right? And we are not. Uh, it's it's not running on the ESX host. We don't need to run it on ESX. And we're not we're not running KVM in this. Yeah, there's no KVM environment. The hypervisor is ESX. It's just all vSphere. Yes. Yep. In fact, yeah. it just talks to vCenter. The Nova does not even know what all ESX hypervisors are there. And that helps with operation. You can take, get rid of one of the hosts, put it in maintenance mode. We can reshuffle it. It helps a lot with the operations. So, uh, so the compute nodes as seen by OpenStack, are they EXSI based? Is there any EXSI on them? Or? Yeah, they, they're all ESX based. Yeah. What, what Nova sees is a full cluster. Right. It sees a cluster as one giant hypervisor. Right. So right. if you had so, a cluster with 10, with 10 ESXi hosts in it, and you went into uh, Horizon and you looked at the hypervisor, it would just show the cluster name. Yeah. It wouldn't show There's you one each of those hypervisors. It would just show you the cluster. Yes? So what about the existing VMs in your ESXi host? Let's say I want to deploy VMware. Uh -huh. So, so there's a couple things in that, that, that yes, if you um, entered maintenance mode, we would evacuate all of the VMs. Um, but generally, you would isolate your OpenStack cluster. And the reason for that is all the accounting that OpenStack does presumes that all the resources you gave it are available minus whatever VMs you've already created. So if you had a bunch of other VMs in there, 
your quotas would be off, and, and it makes sense to isolate, to isolate them. Sure. Yeah. You, you mean you like overlying? The existing DMs. No, we we, we don't you, we don't. Thing, no, you, we we would not recommend touching existing VMs because there is no metadata in OpenStack and it's hard to import metadata so, from. But existing. let's be clear about what you're asking. You you could have non-OpenStack VMs yeah, you in your vCenter environment along with OpenStack. Oh, yeah, I love that. that <laughs> but yeah, you're not. You don't have to isolate that way. But you're not managing existing VMs through OpenStack. Yeah. It's just that OpenStack does not have information of what VMs you have created, and it's pretty hard to take that and migrate and insert it in Cinder, Nova, Neutron, and all the five places, and give it a user and a keystone. And just forget about it. It's not worth it, probably. You know, the reason customers ask for it, mm -hmm. they want one umbrella for management where they can do it. And so um, that's all that's asking you. I understand that that's what they're paying for. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I agree with the use case. It's just uh, the... Yeah. ROI to the effort ratio is pretty bad right now. Okay, any yeah. other questions? The only thing you need to track is uh, resource pools. Resource pools, we are thinking about it. At this point, no. Uh, if you have a specific use case, we can talk a little bit more. Um, we are thinking some ways where it can be useful. Uh, mainly useful in cases where limited licenses are available per host and you want to slice a cluster further. Uh, it is relatively easy for us to do. We just need to know uh, the use case more. Uh, and also resource pool are more dynamic. People change them more often. So keeping NOVA in sync is a bit tricky. So let's talk more uh, offline and I would like to understand your mm -hmm. use case for that. There's this question here, yeah. Do you have security groups by services? You can use security groups with NSX. With NSX. If you're using the distributed switch, you, you can't use. Yeah, there's, there's some limited limitations in functionality. Uh, all, all available with NSX uh, yeah. for uh, yeah NSX uh, with overlays and everything sir. We'll have to think about that a little bit more. <laughs> yeah, but out of the box, we do uh, need NSX and its overlay. Uh, we don't work with other overlay or other overlay products at this point. So you don't have another NSX agent within OpenStack? Yeah, there is an NSX uh, controller. It works with the vSwitch, uh, the distributed vSwitch that it has on various hypervisors. or well, not NVS on various hypervisors. Any, any other questions? Um, yeah. Yeah, glance, it's glance, yes. glance backed by the vSphere data store, so it's the same and image management as you are so, used to. Yeah, so it's it's just a data store, so you don't have to stand up, you don't have to stand up Swift to be able to deploy Glance. Yeah. Yes. So uh, you have the tools in place here to manage this without without being surprising. So you were uh, showing all your tools on top for the monitoring and so on. I mean, Horizon. Those, those Horizon is not an administrator operation tool, right? Horizon is an administrative tool for users, for project quotas. It's not a tool to monitor all these um, ESX or networking. So you, you still need the data center operations tools. Uh, and the example uh, given was of VC ops, but you can use some other tools as well. Uh, or the syslog, I mean, that's an orthogonal thing. It has nothing to do with hor uh, Horizon. So there is a lot of uh, need for other uh, tools to do your day-to-day -day data center operations. And the, our candidates there are vCenter, VC ops, and log insight. Um, the main uh, idea here is that to run OpenStack, you need some of these tools. Or probably all of these tools, uh, not saying specific VMware tools, but you need to think about how you will monitor it, how you will get alert when your Nova goes down or Cinder is not responding and things like that, right? So you need those tools. Uh, we have some of our offerings, uh, if it is relevant, uh, and most of them will probably extend over other hypervisors over time. They are very generic in their approach, so. All right, so the next session, briefly, before you guys all go away, is about how to consume OpenStack using, I mean, uh, we showed you how to deploy it, how to operate it, but do you get the same OpenStack? Yes, you get the same OpenStack. How do you create VMs? How do you consume it? 
how do you create cinder volume, how do you create three tier networks, all those will be in the next. Uh, it's actually a hands on lab, it's available online without any infrastructure. Uh, you can go online and you can take the lab at your own pace. Uh, in fact, this whole installation is also as a part of that hands on lab. So if you want to stick around, uh, we'll show you how to consume OpenStack in the next phase. All right? Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you.